I'm going to have to practice what I preach. Obviously, you have to be prepared when you do your troubleshooting. Hey guys. All right. Today's video is going to be troubleshooting phosphate. If your corals don't look so great, in my opinion, my GSP and my 75 is not opening up a lot. I know that my phosphate is 0.26, I think. So there's a few things you can do to attempt to lower your phosphate. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Let's get into the video. Yesterday I cleaned this out as far as Chato and some hair algae. You can see the hair algae is now growing up through the Chato. Now I'd rather the hair algae grow in here. I've said that before in other videos. However, if the hair algae is not removed soon enough, it could be leaching phosphate back into the system. My green star polyp in the other two tanks are from the same colony. So what I'm going to do is compare the parameters in my 10 gallon and in my 20 gallon and see if there's anything that different. All right, we're gonna test the 10 gallon now. Now you can see I have hair algae growing in the 10 gallon. I have it here and I have it here. I don't sweat that that much, guys. My guess is this is because of low flow in here. This has got very low flow. I will take that out. I manually remove it every once in a while. It just seems to stay to these spots, so it's probably a flow issue. But let's test the phosphate in the 10 gallon. Phosphate test here, let's see. Oh yeah, phosphate, all right. This is the phosphate checker by Hannah. All right, this counts down from three minutes. I took a sample out of the 10 gallon. I put it in here, you shake it up, and then you put it in here and it counts down three minutes and then you get your reading. This is quite decent. I wouldn't try any of the other ones, the color matching. You know, your eyes might not be on, especially with phosphate, because it's down to below one part per million, you know, to have a really great phosphate level, if that's your idea of great phosphate. I've always said you can go a little higher, but. So let's see what the 10 gallon with the great green star polyp growing there winds up to be. There you go. Now, that shoots that theory. <laughs> the theory of the green star polyp requiring low phosphate, it's already trouble shot because that's 0.39 in my 10 gallon. And look at how nice the green star polyp is in here. It's, you know, pretty amazing, right? Am I wrong or am I right? Long polyps. So that changes things. All right, these are possible things that could be causing your phosphate to go up. Number one, it could be the food that you're putting in, flake food. My guess possibly now is that my SA hatchery diet or the pellet food they may have an excessive amount of phosphate in it. The other thing may be your fish load. I have a really large fox face in there. That may be what's causing it. The other thing that might be causing it is I don't pull a lot of my chato and stuff out of my refugium and I let that go a lot. Now, if you let hair algae grow in a refugium for too long, that can leach phosphate back into the tank because there could be some die off on it that you're really not noticing. So I'd have to take the whole thing out, which I don't wanna do. What I'm going to try first, and there's mixed feelings about this. This is detritus on the bottom here. And some say that doesn't affect your nitrate and phosphate, but I'm gonna siphon this out remove it all so it's completely clean and see if that will help. And I'll also clean the sides off of this hair algae. And remember, I'm doing this for the video. I'm gonna try multiple things, but you guys, when you wanna lower or troubleshoot and test something, only do one thing 
at least within a 24 to 48 hour period because if you do multiple things then you're not going to know what the cause or the help was because you've done two or three things at one time. All right, the next thing you wanna do is investigate your food that you're putting in the tank and how much. I realize that this hatchery diet, it's a dry formula and most dry fish foods are loaded with phosphorus. Any of the flake foods, any of these pellet foods, and I've just always loved it because of the coloration I saw my fish. But it's the only explanation I can give as to why my phosphate continues to rise shortly after a water change. And what I mean by that is like week to week, I see my phosphate going down right after the water change, and then it comes back up within three or four days after that to a week, it starts to rise. So that means it's something that's going into my tank, not coming out of it. So whenever you're gonna troubleshoot anything, you wanna always make sure that the first thing you do is obviously test your parameters, test all your parameters to see if something is really wacky. Oh, that's my <laughs> uh, to see if something's really wacky, so. If I told you what my 20 gallon phosphate level was, you'd freak out. You want me to tell you? 0.9 parts per million. Now there's something to be said, and I won't get into it in this video, it's called the red field ratio. And you can see that there's nothing going on in the tank that looks like it's harming anything. There's my nitrate level on my 75 gallon, trace zero but yet it has 0.2 parts per million phosphate. So this is why I tell you guys, don't concern yourself too much with numbers unless you see something really going wrong. I'm gonna eliminate this for about a month and see if my phosphate comes down after water changes and see what happens to my green star polyp. But however, we have proven that based on how it's growing in here and in here, it shouldn't matter. Maybe this is too low phosphate in here. That could be too. So anyway, it could be the simplest thing. You know, it could be my light needs to be adjusted over there, but I don't think so because I have the lighting on my 10 gallon and on my 20 gallon uh, the same as the light that's directly over the green star polyp there. Flow. Flow in here in my 10 gallon is extremely minimal. That could be part of it, but I'm looking at the flow in the location of the green star polyp in the 75 gallon, and it isn't a strong flow. Something is causing them not to open up. Now, sometimes they just want to do that, but I think there's always something a little off when your green star polyp don't really open up a lot. Yeah, well, we'll have to see, guys. I can't give you the results today because I did this live as I was doing this video. I was doing all the testing and all what you saw today. So I definitely will let you know what my results are next week on the video for uh, next week. Take care now, guys. Have a great one. See you next time.